This here is Percival the slug. He's happy about the rainy weather, the fat green grass blades, and the larger than expected tax refund his accountant just informed him about. All in all, Percival is having a wonderful day, which... Okay, let's just start over again. This here is Bob the dog. After burying his master's wallet in the garden, he ate a delicious slug. All in all, Bob is having a wonderful day because he's totally clueless about the parasitic worm larvae he just consumed with the slug. Let us take a closer look. Angiostrongylus vesorum is an internal parasite of dogs and likes. Its proper name is French Heartworm, probably because of the Eiffel Tower photobombing all the pictures ever taken of it, or maybe because it was discovered in France, no one can tell for sure. Even though it's called Heartworm, the main damage it's responsible for is of the lungs. It's much smaller than its namesake, barely reaching the length of 2 cm as an adult. It has nothing to hide, its insides are visible through its skin. It's most common in Europe, but it can be found almost everywhere around the globe. The definitive host, the dog, acquires the parasite by ingesting the infected intermediate host, the slug. Neither of them is very happy about this, but due to the lack of heart-wrenching puppy dog eyes, we don't really give a shit about the slug. Inside the dog's guts, the worm is set free. At this point we call it stage 3 larva, or L3 for short, it's practically a child, but it knows exactly that marinating in stinky digestive juices is not a good way of getting old. It penetrates the intestinal wall and migrates to the mesenteric lymph nodes, where it procrastinates long enough to outgrow its skin twice, becoming a stage 5 larva, or L5. After this, it will ride the blood flow to the liver, because it's a fun organ from the inside, then it will continue its journey through the heart to the pulmonary arteries. You can't remain an L5 forever, mom always said, so deep inside the vessels of the lungs, the parasite waves goodbye to youth and turns into an adult worm. The males then seduce the females by reciting Monty Python quotes. After mating, the females lay tiny eggs into the blood, which get helplessly carried away by the flow and eventually get stuck in the pulmonary capillaries. This is right next to the respiratory surface, so the stage 1 larvae, or L1s, hatching from the eggs, don't have anywhere else to go. They chew through the thin wall of the air vesicles and land in the airways. The dog will cuff them up and either spit them out or swallow them. The latter is a longer journey to the outside, but it's filled with colorful, well, mostly brown experiences. Whether or not little L1 exits the dog in the front or in the back, it will put its life in the hands of fate. Although pretty durable and in no need of counseling, it will eventually kick the bucket unless a slug or a snail comes rushing in to feast on the delicious pile of crap and, incidentally, on the larva. The intermediate host is a sort of kindergarten for the parasite. In it, the little worm will learn how to tie its shoelaces and how to cuss like a mother During the weeks and months spent in the slug, the larva molds twice, turning into an L3, ready to infect any stupid dog hungry for slugs. But of course your dog is not so dumb as to eat slugs. Maybe a frog sometimes, or cigarette butts, or the occasional Paris-Moscow bus ticket, but a slug? Not in a million years. Bob can't get infected, can he? Well, most dogs really do not eat slugs or snails. Not intentionally at least, because it's disgusting. But they often munch on all sorts of shit they find lying around, literal shit too, and if a slug happens to be dining on top of it, well, that's an express ticket to the dog's belly. Also, somewhat sick scientific experiments taught us that the L3 is able to exit the slug on its own and can survive in the slime trail for a short time. Bob, therefore, might also get infected simply by licking up the slug's snot. Furthermore, it's been demonstrated that frogs too can act as intermediate hosts, or at least transport hosts, meaning the larva doesn't grow in them or do anything besides knitting sweaters, so frog-eating dogs aren't safe from the worm either. 
It should be noted though that the experimental conditions under which the L3s emerging from the slug and the frogs getting infected were observed were not strictly speaking natural, so it's hard to say whether these crazy pathways of development are ever taken by sane larvae in the wild, and if so, how often they lead to infection of dogs. So maybe just because you notice a slime trail on your dog's golden drinking bowl, it's not worth ripping your own face off in a full-blown panic attack, but I thought I should post a warning, just to be on the safe side. Okay, okay, but what happens to the dog if it gets infected? Around 6 to 10 weeks after the L3 is ingested, the adult worm starts laying eggs in the small arteries of the lungs and the hatching larvae begin damaging the local lung tissue. The severity of the damage greatly depends on how many worms are present in the dog. If only a few, you may not even notice the occasional cough, but if the worms are teeming, Bob is facing some hardcore chronic coughing and the destruction of his useful respiratory surface, which leads to exercise intolerance and shortness of breath. These symptoms alone are not very specific, they could be signs of heart disease or Bechech syndrome or something, but French heartworm infection may also lead to bleeding disorders. Consider it a bonus. Injuries bleed longer, bloodshots and hematomas appear all over the body, and fatal internal bleeding becomes a real possibility. How do worms in the lungs cause bleeding disorders? Scientists determine that we just don't f know yet. If you find out, please do tell us. Contrary to its namesake, however, the French heartworm rarely causes heart disease. On this note, not so long ago, a crowd of almost three parasitologists gathered on the street protesting for changing the name of the parasite to lungworm because that's more in line with the pathology of the disease. Angiostrongulus vesorum, therefore, is also referred to as a lungworm, lumped together with several other parasitic worm species living in the lungs. Specific mentions of the parasite should either say the Latin name or French heartworm. When respiratory symptoms and bleeding disorders are seen at the same time, the possibility of French heartworm infection should be considered, but for a certain diagnosis, we need more. The microscopic larvae have to be shown in the dog's spit or poop, which is not only difficult because you have to soak shit in water in a champagne glass for 8 hours, friendly advice, don't do it on New Year's Eve, but because larvae are not produced continuously and you just might pick a time when none are present. Blood tests able to detect the infection have become available lately, but they aren't perfect either, so combining them with a classic technique is recommended. This is all fine and dandy, but how can you kill the damn worm? Several drugs with unpronounceable names are suitable for this purpose. They are available in the forms of spotons and pills, some are better, others less so. Your veterinarian will know which one is worth taking, and they'll sell you the more expensive one. Just kidding, just kid- <coughs> <coughs> The French heartworm, by the way, is a pretty tough parasite. Even with proper treatment, one to two months are needed for all of them to die off. Without treatment, they may live for years. Although the worm can be destroyed, full recovery can only be expected in the case of light to moderate illness. If the lungs have already been chewed up into a pulp, they are not going back to normal even after the death of the parasites. Oh, and it's not a bad idea to do something about the symptoms during those 1-2 months of worm killing, which is quite a challenge if the dog is choking and bleeding and you want to adhere to the rules of Spanish etiquette at the same time. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, f*** me. Furthermore, we can only kill the parasite but not remove it. The latter has to be done by the host's own body, which in the case of a truckload of worms is almost as straining as shoveling snow with grandpa. <coughs> Due to all of this, it's probably better to prevent lungworm disease caused by the French heartworm than to treat it once it develops. So don't let your dog eat slugs and snails and frogs or lick up unknown snot from the ground. It's best if you wrap it in cellophane and put it in the closet between the ironing board and the Peruvian sitting mummy. 
I get it, this isn't very practical, so it's a legitimate question whether there are any spot-on spills or some other stuff for prevention, like there are against ticks, fleas and whatnot. The answer is yes. Go ask your veterinarian. Unless they have spent the past 10 years in a coma, they'll know what to give. If you're worried that the French hardware might infect you as well, let me reassure you, we have no idea if that's possible or not. No human cases have been reported so far, but to be fair, we don't really eat raw slugs or snails. If you become infected anyway somehow, you're gonna be famous. Just a quick note so you don't feel excluded from the lungworm business, humans are able to contract the lungworm of the rat. However, in people it attacks the brain rather than the lungs. Much better, right? So don't eat raw snails and slugs and unwashed greens in Southeast Asia. Cat owners can relax. It's very rare for the French heartworm to cause problems in cats. Instead, cats have their own lungworm, the name of which should probably come with a speech therapist included. Summing it up. Angiostrongylus vesorum, or French heartworm, lungworm to be more precise, is a parasite of dogs with worldwide presence. It damages the lungs and causes bleeding disorders, but it's sexy as hell. If caught in time, the infection can be cured easily, although not quickly. For severe cases, it's best to ask for heavenly intervention, which you don't always receive, so it's a bit more practical to prevent the disease in the first place. I am the real heartworm and this is my dog, so get the hell out of here before I... Bonjour. The technical information in this video was fact-checked by Olga Yochu and Gabor Majoros parasitologists. I thank them very much. As much as I thank Bayer for its support. If you've made it this far, why not like, comment or subscribe? Or check out my other videos. I know it would make at least one of us happy.